a certified lymphedema therapist and for this video we're going to be talking about the next phase of lymphedema treatment. So after we do what's called the acute phase of lymphedema treatment where we do the skin care, um, manual lymphatic drainage, compression wrapping which is really the um, big part of that, um, and then the muscle pump exercises to decrease the limb size. Once we get to a point where the area has decongested to a point that we're happy with, then we move into the management phase of lymphedema treatment. And this is the lifelong process of managing lymphedema. It never goes away, so it's something that we always have to keep track of. We always have to keep on top of it so that it doesn't get worse because if we stop our program, um, it's guaranteed that the fluid and the protein is going to collect more and you're going to see that limb volume increase and you're going to start to see those skin changes that come from the irritation from the protein being there. So this is the program that you're trying to come up with for the management long term. The first part, just like the acute phase, really important to be on top of your skin care. Making sure that you're not going to get cellulitis making sure that you're not getting any fungal infections, there's no cuts or scrapes on your skin, being really careful to take care of that area, find the products that work for you, what kind of moisturizer your skin likes, something that's not going to irritate it, making sure you have a soap that's not going to dry your skin out, all those kind of things. A big part of this too is skin checks. So especially for people with lower extremity lymphedema, if it's in your legs, you need to keep an eye on your feet and um, this is even more so if you have any kind of a circulatory problem, if your venous sufficiency, or if you have a venous insufficiency where your return circulation from your legs isn't very good, the circulation tends to pool in your feet and that contributes to your swelling, it makes you a lot more susceptible to get ulcers. So um, an ulcer is just an area where the skin starts to open up and it's basically raw and it's very susceptible to getting an infection because you have no protection there. This complicates the treatment, the initial treatment for sure, if you're trying to go for a complete decongestive therapy because then it adds a whole other component of wound care onto that. So um, we want to try to avoid that complicating factor as much as possible and um, skin care is a huge part of doing that. So once we have the skin care routine, that's a pretty easy thing to work in. Just normal, you know, bath, shower, do your thing. The next part is daytime compression garments. So you might have seen these, especially if you're starting to look into these kind of treatments. You'll have a sleeve that you put on your arm. Sometimes there's a glove component if you need compression on your fingers. There's either a knee-high or a thigh-high compression garment for the legs. If you need even more compression than that, they have um, their tights that you would pull up that have legs. Um, there's also bike shorts that can go on top of thigh-high compression garments. So there's a lot of different things that can be mixed and matched depending on where you need compression. Also depending on how much compression you need. And that's something that your therapist is going to figure out during the acute phase. So what they're basing that on is how easily does your fluid move? How is the limb responding to pressure? And if they wrap you the first few times and the fluid's moving really well and everything looks really good, you don't have areas that are stubborn or pocketing, then you can probably go with a lower compression rating. Now if you've had lymphedema for a longer time and there's a lot of fibrosis or the fluid is stubborn during the acute phase, it takes a long time to move it, um, then you're going to have to look at a higher compression grade because it means that you're going to need more pressure to prevent that fluid from returning. So I'll go over the compression grades a little bit later, but during the daytime you would have this compression garment on. Now it's really important to highlight the fact that a compression garment or a compression sleeve or a compression sock doesn't reduce limb size. It prevents the limb size from increasing which we know in lymphedema is a constant battle. Um, the fluid and the protein is already having difficulty moving. So if we remove compression and we just have, you know, say a naked arm or a naked leg with no compression on it, if the lymphatic system is not working optimally, then as soon as you take that compression off, you're getting refill. You're getting fluid, you're getting protein that's coming back into the area. And it might be slow depending on how much damage you have to your lymphatic system. For some people it would be rather quickly if they took off their compression garment for a whole day, they might be a centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters larger from not having their compression on. Some people can take it off for a little while and they don't notice a big change. 
but you have to be very careful about that because the change is gradual and a lot of people won't even notice that it's happening until it's significantly larger. So daytime compression garment, what we usually say is 23 hours out of the day, you need to have compression on that area. So that one hour that you're free from your compression garment really counts for when you're taking a shower and doing your self-care routine. That's the time that you're supposed to take it off. You don't wear it in the shower. Um, but every other part of the day, as much as you possibly can, you need to have compression on there so that you're not increasing the volume in that limb. Now, the components that kind of work together with this is daytime compression garment. It's just a sleeve. It's very comfortable. You can even get um, different colors and patterns now. There's so many different products out there for lymphedema. It's really it's gotten kind of fun with the patterns and things that you can get. But then at nighttime, this is when if you've had any refill during the day, and that's going to depend on your activity level, the weather, um, all sorts of stuff. Then at night, you need to have a greater level of compression on. So for some people who during the acute phase did the wrapping, the multi-layer compression wrapping with the short stretch bandages, putting the padding on, layering up, spiraling those bandages up the limb, they might want to do that at night and sleep with that compression wrap on. Um, and that's a really good option, but it's a little bit time consuming. So this is where some of the product alternatives come in, things like a Faro wrap or a Solaris garment. Those kind of things really cut down on the amount of time that it'll take for you to get that garment on and get yourself wrapped. But you need to have that extra compression at night in order to move the fluid that might have refilled during the day. Um, but hopefully, if you're being good about wearing your compression garment regularly for 23 hours out of the day, you should have minimal refill during the day. So you might not have too much of an issue with that, and that's really where we want you to be at. But um, finding a nighttime garment that's going to work for you is really important. If you take off your garment at night and you don't have any compression on it, it will refill. Um, and this is different depending on if you have a pure lymphedema or if you have a venous-related edema, which we kind of treat in similar ways, but if it's more of a venous component, since you respond better to gravity and having your legs elevated, for some people, if they just elevate their legs at night, that can control their swelling and it won't get worse, but that's a person-to-person -person basis. You really have to do your measurements and see what your activities are and compare that to what your circumference size is for that day. If you have lymphedema, doesn't matter. Elevation or having your leg down, any position you're in, the fluid is still accumulating because the lymphatic system isn't working. So don't um, think that if you have your legs elevated you can take your compression off and you'll be fine because it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So once you have a good system of day con daytime compression garments, something that fits really well, and I think I'll do another video about that to get into some of the nuances of garments, but um, once you have that good daytime garment fits well, controls your edema during the day, and something that you can wrap with a little bit more pressure at night to make sure that you're getting the fluid moving, you have to work in this other component which also carries over from the acute phase, which is doing daily manual lymphatic drainage. And we know from talking about the acute treatment that the lymphatic drainage is essential because that's what moves the protein out of the area. That's what gets your lymphatic vessels moving protein away so that you don't get the problems with your skin. You don't get fibrosis and keratin growth and things like that that come from the inflammation of having too much protein in the interstitial space or in that cellular space. So daily lymphatic drainage and it's a little bit of a modified sequence so when I treat a patient I do a long sequence where I cover the whole area that I need to work on. When you do it to yourself, you can't reach your back that well, so we cut that part out. It's a modified shorter sequence. It might take 10 minutes, it might take about 15 minutes, depending on how thorough you want to be that day, but you try to hit all the same areas. And um, work that into your routine. I usually tell people it's great to do that right after you take a shower or take a bath. Put your moisturizer on so that gets into your daily routine. And then with that moisturizer, you have a little bit more friction on your skin to be able to get that stretch and pull effect that you want to get when you're doing lymphatic drainage. Just that very gentle stretch, open the lymphatic capillary, let the fluid and protein go in, and then gently release so that the capillary closes and the fluid is moved. And for a lot of people, 
working that into their routine can kind of become a nice thing because it's relaxing to do it. You can put on nice music and make it something important that you do for yourself to take care of yourself to make sure that you're staying healthy. I think it helps to really put that emphasis on it, that it's something that you're doing to take care of yourself. Now at the same time that you're doing your manual lymphatic drainage, you're working on your relaxation techniques and your deep breathing, because those are two things that help with the overall fluid movement in your body. If you think about having really tight muscles, or especially a lot of us hold our tension in our shoulders, so if those muscles are really tight and knotted up, you think about what that does to the vessels that are trying to move fluid through that area, that tension is very restrictive. So we want to make sure that we do practices like meditation, like deep breathing, or even just listening to music that you like that relaxes you so that you can drain some of that tension out of the muscles. Then the aspect of adding in deep breathing creates movement of your diaphragm muscle and that changes the pressure in your thoracic cavity in the center of your body. So it increases and decreases the amount of pressure. And if you think about your muscle pump exercises, that's exactly what you want to happen. That alternating increased and decreased pressure to pump. So the center of the body is really essential to have that done. The great thing is that deep breathing doesn't take any extra time out of your day. You can do that anywhere when you're driving, if you're waiting in the line at the grocery store, if you're on the phone, anything that you are doing during the day, you can just stop and tell yourself to breathe deeply while you're doing that. It's a great way to work it in. So manual lymphatic drainage, and then you're going to follow that probably by putting on your night compression, whatever has more compression. But if it's during the day and you have your compression sleeve on, that's fine too. Just make sure you have some sort of compression on when you do your muscle pump exercise because you need that external pressure to work against the muscle contraction to create the pump. So then you would have your set sequence of whatever you would do, working from the center of the body down the limb that's affected and then back up to the center of the body. Now, if you're somebody who does any kind of weightlifting or anything like that, you can do light weights with the affected limb. Don't go really heavy, don't go really strenuous because that can aggravate the condition. But um, if you have, say, a one or two pound weight in your hand and you're doing your muscle pump sequence at the elbow and at the forearm and then you're squeezing something to grip, that resistance will actually increase the effectiveness of the muscle pump because you're getting greater contraction. So that's something to consider working up to. Usually toward the end of my treatment with my patients, I'll work them into a program where their muscle pump exercises are done with some kind of a weight or some kind of resistance so that you can see that it can work into your normal day-to-day -day exercise routine as something that um, doesn't take a, any extra time for you to complete. So that's the overall process of what we try to do long term. Now there's a few other things that are really important to highlight and the first one that I always talk about with my patients is maintaining a healthy body weight and this is so important because if you think about the process that happens if you have extra body weight on you, especially around your stomach, it's going to put pressure on your lymphatic system. Or if you have a lot of excess size around your thighs, it's going to put pressure into your inguinal lymph nodes, into those groin lymph nodes. Um, same thing into the armpit lymph nodes. All that extra size around your body from having weight on you is going to impede the circulation. So taking yourself down to a healthy body weight is going to be really good for your management of lymphedema. It makes it easier for your body to move fluid. And it has so many other benefits to you that, you know, you have a long list of reasons to work on maintaining that healthy body weight. Doing an exercise program, doing a relaxation program are all going to tie in with helping you maintain a healthy body weight. But um, what you're going to want to do is, is weigh yourself regularly because weight is one of the things that we track in terms of progress for how you're managing your lymphedema. If you suddenly notice that the scale is going up one pound, two pounds, three pounds, and then you check your circumference measurements and you see that those are increasing, those are the things that are going to raise a red flag that maybe your symptoms are getting aggravated and you need to do something. Most of the time that happens when people slack off with their program, which happens somewhat regularly, especially in the long-term maintenance of things, or if you get busy, or for a lot of people, if they go on vacation, they're like, well, I don't want to do my manual lymphatic drainage, I'm on vacation. 
but um, just know that if you do skip a few days, you're going to have to go back to really getting some good compression on. You might have to wear your nighttime compression during the day to get even more compression on because you had some refill. But it's a, it's a play back and forth of figuring out what's going to work in your life. You know, you need to still be able to live and enjoy yourself and do the things that you want to do, but find a balance of making sure that you can fit in the things you have to do to take care of yourself. So the next one is taking regular measurements. And what I mean by that is taking measurements of your limb. So whatever your affected limb is, you'll have some landmarks that you'll measure. So if it's your arm, you would measure around the thinnest part of your wrist. If you had any involvement with your hand, you would usually measure around the hand, maybe around some of the fingers, um, around the top of the forearm, a couple places around your arm, just to give yourself some landmarks to check your circumference. And you would keep a chart. So at the first week of every month, you would take your measurements and then chart them and see from month to month if you're having any increase in volume. And that, again, would raise a red flag that maybe you're not being as good about your program as you need to be, or it could be a signal that your compression garment is getting old and the elasticity isn't as strong as it used to be, and you need to throw that one out and get a new one. It's important to remember that the compression sleeves or the compression stockings have to be replaced at least every six months, um, and that's with daily wear. So if you have two pairs, which most people do, and they alternate days, you can usually get a year out of it, but um, keep an eye on your circumference measurements. Make sure you're not getting any changes with that, and be very careful about the way that you care for your garment. So if you're using soap that dries it out, that's going to have an effect on how elastic it is and how much pressure it's able to put on your limbs. So you don't want to dry it out. You don't want to leave it outside in the sun to dry, definitely, because that will damage the elasticity. Use a very gentle soap. Some companies, and definitely check with your company of what their care recommendations are. Some say hand wash only. Other ones say that you can machine wash it. So see what your care instructions are for yours. If you want to get a longer life out of them, I would suggest hand washing, just because it's not going to have as much wear and tear. Um, and if you've purchased a garment before, you know that they're rather expensive, especially the leg garments. So you want to take good care of them. You don't want to have to buy them more frequently than you need to. So proper care of your compression garments, really important. So a little tip that um, someone told me, which is great, you take a Sharpie marker, and when you get your new compression garment, you write on the inside edge what date you opened it and started wearing it. Because six, seven months later, you might forget how long you've had that one. So if you have the date kind of written on the inside edge, you can check it and know, okay, it's time to throw that one out, let me get a new one. Um, and if you have two of them, then you can kind of gauge how far that's going to last you. And a lot of people will keep their old garments and they kind of hang around and sometimes you'll get them mixed up, which is the new one, which is the old one, so that way you know exactly which is which. Now, um, for some people, they do like to keep their old compression garment, even when they get a new one, and they hang on to it for, um, if they're doing something that's it's going to get messy or dirty, then they put the old one on for a little while just because it gives some compression. It's not ideal, but they don't mind getting it dirty, like if they're gardening or baking where there's going to be stuff all over the place, things like that. Then um, when they're done with it, they take the old one off, wash it, and put the new one back on so they have good compression. But it's a nice way to use your old garments. The other one is um, if they're going swimming. A lot of people will put the old one on because they don't want their new garment to get chlorine or something like that on it. All right, so that brings us down to the bottom, which is just talking about the different levels of compression. And this is very important, making sure that you have the proper level of compression to manage your condition and how severe it is. So one of the problems that I see very frequently is I'll ask people, okay, do you have a compression garment? And they'll say, oh yeah, I got that when I was in the hospital. They gave me these socks. And they'll take out, usually they're white. Sometimes they come in tan now, but we call them TED stockings. And they, are, um, they can be knee high or they can be thigh high, depending on what the doctor wanted. These are low compression. They're between 14 and 21 millimeters of mercury. And that millimeters of mercury is the same measurement that we use when we take blood pressure. It just shows us how much pressure is created. So you can think of it that way, the amount of pressure that that garment is creating. So the TED stocking is low. It's 14 to 21 millimeters of mercury in pressure. And what that does is it's really an anti-blood clot treatment. So if somebody's in the hospital, 
they're not walking around as much, they're stagnant, they're more likely to have their blood pooling in their legs because they don't have any muscle pump activity going on. And then you'll get a blood clot. So they want to make sure that that doesn't happen by putting compression on to help increase the circulation, um, which is great. They serve their purpose really well, but once you're up and you're walking around, standing up, it's not enough compression against gravity. So if you're standing and you're walking, but you still need compression treatment, you need to move up into the higher grades, especially for the legs. You really need something more. The other use that they have for these lower grade compressions are like a sports compression. So some people who do marathons or triathletes will wear compression because it helps with their performance. They don't fatigue as quickly when they have that extra circulation coming up from their legs from having compression on them. And that's actually something that I do when I work out. Um, and actually most days when I'm standing or I'm doing anything where I'm on my feet, I have compression at least up to my knees because it really helps with that. The next compression level is a class one, which is 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury. Um, this is usually the standard that we start with for the arm. The arm doesn't need quite as much compression. If it's um, mild lymphedema in the legs, we can do a 20 to 30 measurement in the legs, but that's really if the fluid moved well during the acute phase or if that person hasn't had lymphedema for a really long time where the skin became fibrotic. Class 2 is 30 to 40. This is really more for the leg. It would not be used in the arm too much unless there was a really severe condition. Um, and then we get down into class 3, 40 to 50. That's only for the leg, and that would be for a rather severe case of lymphedema, somebody who needs a lot more pressure. When we start to get to the 40 or 50 or um, even above that, you can get custom garments done even more pressure than that. That would really be for somebody who's in the later stages of lymphedema, like say the um, elephantiasis condition where there were a lot of lobules and a lot of folds that need pressure. They need to be contained so that the person can move around well. That really high compression level is going to get you there. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for the long-term maintenance of lymphedema. Thank you so much for joining me.